and welcome to another episode of Red Sox Classics here on Nesson. I'm your host, Don Orsillo. On June 14, 1999, the Minnesota Twins came to Fenway Park to face young starter Jin Ho Cho and the Red Sox powerful lineup. The Twins struggled to keep pace in the AL Central in 1999, but the Red Sox had held on to first place in the AL East for much of the young season and only had slipped recently to second place behind the Yankees. They needed to take care of business against Minnesota to keep the pressure on their bitter rivals and make a push to regain the divisional lead. Twins starter Brad Radke would keep the Sox offense in check for most of the day. But in the end, it would be two unlikely Red Sox heroes, outfielder Darren Lewis and utility man Jeff Fry, who would provide the fireworks and lead the Red Sox to victory in the most dramatic of fashions. Darren Lewis entered the 1999 season as an outfielder known for his defensive abilities, having hit a career-high eight home runs in 1998. Jeff Fry appeared at three different infield positions in 1999 for the Red Sox, never having hit more than four home runs in a season. The pair had combined to hit one home run in 273 plate appearances coming into the game. The stage was set for one of the most unlikely comebacks. Let's head out to Fenway for another Red Sox Classic. Nice night here in Boston. We welcome you back to Fenway Park. Started before game series, matching the Red Sox and the Minnesota Twins. Kenny Twins lineup tonight. As Jacques Jones leading off, playing right field. Christian Guzman bat second at short, followed by Todd Walker at second base. Marty Cordova will be the Twins' designated hitter. It's Ron Coomer at first, Corey Koski at third base, Chad Allen, the youngster out in left field, Javier Valentin handling things behind the plate, and Torrey Hunter, the center fielder, bats number nine. And the defense tonight for the Red Sox, John Balanton will be at third base, Noma Agassi a par of the shortstop, Jeff Fry at second, and Mike Stanley at first. Left to right, Troy O'Leary, Damon Buford, and Darren Lewis, Jason Veritek behind the plate, and on the mound, Jin Ho Cho making his first start Leading of the season. You see the numbers in Pawtucket, 7-1 and one, with a 3.41 ERA. That was seventh best in, in, in the International League. Our men in blue tonight, Richie Garcia behind the plate. He's the crew chief. Mike Riley works at first base, Dale Ford at second, and Mark Johnson will be the third base umpire. First pitch of the night, Jacques Jones pops it in the air, and back into the crowd. One strike to count on the Twins' leadoff hitter. So a little bit of Jacques Jones in spring training, hitting 250 in limited duty so far for the Twins this year. Was called up from Salt Lake City of AAA on June 9th, made his Major League debut that night against the Cincinnati Reds. Jones skies it to left field. Troy O'Leary back on the warning track at the wall. Going to have to play this one off the wall. Troy got a little tight into the wall there and wounding second base of an easy double is Jacques Jones. I don't think it mattered. I think it was going to be a two-base hit for Jones either way, but he's smiling. He's at second base with a leadoff double. He's smiling because he loves Fenway Park already. He got that wind blowing out toward the left field wall tonight. It looked like a changeup from uh, Cho that stays up in the zone, and Jock Jones just hit it off that wall. A wall scraper, but good enough for the leadoff two-base hit. First major league double for Jacques Jones. Also has a triple so far in his brief major league resume. He's in scoring position. Christian Guzman is at the plate. Guzman jumps on the first pitch and lines out to Mike Stanley at first base. As with a lot of young ball clubs, uh, the Twins are free swingers and they usually don't hang around long. Stanley in close, expecting the possible bunt from Christian Guzman. Instead, he hits the line drive and not much reaction time at all for Stanley. He's in, uh, in tight, close closer than that first base bag, but he's able to get the out. Jones was not that far off the second base bag, so they couldn't get the double play. Here's Todd Walker, the Minnesota second baseman. One of the better hitters in the American League. Takes one up high, one ball, no strikes. Walker, 275 this year, three homers, and 20 runs batted in. Walker, a 316 hitter a year ago. So he's down a bit this year as he shoots it foul down the left field line. That evens the count at one and one. And I can tell the team's been on the road a while. Anthony uh, boots the first one down that left field line. Really not taking round balls while the Sox were visiting Montreal in New York. And again, the pressure starting to build for him because that All-Star game coming to town. Chance to highlight himself in front of the whole world. Walker fouls one back, one and two now, the count on Walker. 
Minnesota rained out yesterday in interleague play against the Milwaukee Brewers at County Stadium. Tom Kelly's crew won both games that were played there in Milwaukee. The Brewers retiring Paul Molitor's number four in ceremonies on Friday night. Two balls, two strikes. Jin Ho Cho, seven and one this year at Pawtucket. Paw Sox won his last five starts. Cho has not lost a game since May the 9th. Round ball to short. Nomar Garcia Parra will handle things over to Stanley at first. And Jones moves from second to third with now two outs. Well, the Red Sox so far this year will get some big time help from that pitching staff down at Pawtucket. Brian Rose, of course, uh, has done a great job. Pena and the couple of starts he made before going on to the Sable list. And now they're hoping to get the same from uh, Jin Ho Cho. Bad hop right at the end for Garcia Parra, but he's able to make the play at first base. And the Red Sox now with two outs. And Jock Jones moves to third. Marty Cordova at the plate for the Twins. He is DHing tonight. Now they say you never have enough uh, pitching, and the Red Sox certainly proven that. Looked like the Sox were all set with five solid veteran starters. But they've needed a lot of help from the kids from the farm. Ryan Rose has come up and done a sensational job. Great poise shown by Rose, and he's worked against some very difficult ball clubs. We were mentioning the Yankees twice. Pitched against the Mets at Shea Stadium. Worked against Cleveland. Breaking ball, driven past Valentin at third into the left field corner. Marty Cordova, he is going for two, and Cordova walks into second base with a two-out double that scores Jock Jones, and the Twins grab a one-nothing lead. Well, we showed you numbers in the open uh, where the Minnesota Twins rank offensively, which is down toward the bottom of the lead, but over the last ten games, they have been swinging the bat very well. That ball right off the glove of John Valentin. And Cordova into second base. The Twins have the one nothing lead. Monty Cordova's really been hot. 421 over the last 16 games. He's one of those Minnesota Twins that may be available, according to stories out of the Twin Cities, with the Twins uh, struggling as they were expected to do in the one loss record. They continue to cut payroll, and Cordova apparently could be had. Since the last time we saw Minnesota, Rick Aguilera was traded to the Chicago Cubs. Here's Ron Coomer. 291, eight homers, 26 runs batted in. Foul back to the screen. It always uh, feels like the Twins are so familiar because the Red Sox see so much of Minnesota during spring training down in Fort Myers. A lot of the names in this lineup would certainly be familiar to the folks down in New Britain, Connecticut, because that's where a lot of these players uh, played last season. That's right. That's basically their team from last summer. Breaking ball fouled back by Coomer. Still two strikes. Thirteen rookies right now on the active roster. Thirteen of the 25 players that Tom Kelly has brought into Fenway Park are in their rookie year. And a good share of them, as Jerry mentioned, played double-A ball at New Britain last year. Coomer, not one of them. Coomer actually put about nine years into the minor leagues before he came over to Minnesota in a 1995 trade with the Dodgers. And been in the Twins uniform ever since. Mark Guthrie and uh, Kevin Tappany going out to L.A. in that trade. Coomer, one of the few veteran players on this Minnesota club as he fouls it back. Still a ball and two strikes. You know, Cho had a 15 strikeout game April 23rd for the Paw Sox this year at Syracuse, tying Oil Can Boyd's 15 strikeout game for Pawtucket back in 1984. So that was the big strikeout game for Cho down with the Paw Sox. Two balls and two strikes on Ron Coomer. Marty Cordova at second base with two outs. A run in for Minnesota here in the top of the first.
Grounder to short. Nomar Garcia Parra handles things over to Stanley. That retires the side. One run on two hits, a pair of doubles against Cho in the first inning. And the Twins have a 1 0 lead with the Red Sox coming up. Back here at Fenway Park, the Twins have the early lead. One run on the scoreboard with the Red Sox batting here in the home half to first. Jimmy Williams' lineup tonight features Jeff Fry leading it off at second base. John Ballantin follows at third. Reggie Jefferson gets a shot tonight as the DH. Omar Garcia Parra bats to clean up. Troy O'Leary once again controlling left field. Mike Stanley in the ball game at first base. David Buford gets the call in center field. Jason Veritex behind the plate. And Darren Lewis in right field will hit ninth. And the Minnesota Twins currently have the best defensive team in the American League. They've only made 34 errors on the season. It'll be Corey Kosky at third base. Christian Guzman the shortstop. Todd Walker at second and Ron Coomer at first. Left to right Chad Allen, Torrey Hunter and Jacques Jones. Javier Valentin will be doing the catching and on the mound right hand to Brad Radke five and five on the season 3.53 ERA is eighth best in the American League. He's one and oh this year against the Red Sox uh, only gave up one earned run in six innings in an earlier series at the Metrodome. He's five and five in his career. He's always had terrific control. Uh, he's only walked 16 batters this season in 86 and two thirds innings. He's got the best ratio in the league as far as that's concerned. Twins have two complete games this year from their starting staff, both of which belong to Brad Radke. One against Baltimore on May the 1st, another one against Anaheim on June the 2nd. So here comes Jeff Fry leading off for the Red Sox, 221 on the year. No homers in six runs batted in for Jeff. Fry had a couple of starts on the road trip at third base when John Valentin uh, suffered the strained groin. He got the start at shortstop yesterday as... Nomar Garcia Parra got the day off and playing his natural position. Second base here tonight. First pitch strike from Radke. He will generally throw strikes. Offerman getting the day off uh, from Jimmy Williams. Uh, Fry in there. He's seven for 18 in his career against uh, Brad Radke. Fry checking the baseball. Sometimes they get rubbed up uh, pretty dark. And a lot of times that leadoff hitter will take a look at it and say, give me something a little bit lighter, please. There are those career numbers against Radke that Jerry was mentioning. One and one, the count on Fry. Red Sox back here at Fenway Park where they're 18 and 11 this year. Following that tough trip through Montreal in New York where they lost five of the six games. They're now a 500 ball club on the road 16 and 16. Back to the American League tonight with the designated hitter in force. Back in familiar territory here playing the Minnesota Twins tonight first of four here at Fenway. Fry chasing and down on strikes as Radke as victim number one. Number two hitter for the Red Sox is John Valentin. Takes a fast ball down and away. 260 for John. Five homers and 36 runs batted in. Not the corner with that one. That'll even things at a ball and a strike. Brad Radke, one and three lifetime here at Fenway Park. Valentin's career numbers against Radke, including the two home runs. Valentin with a couple home runs at the expense of Radke, and O'Leary has homered against Radke three times. Allenton fouls it back to the screen. Two balls, two strikes. Renke with a win earlier this year over the Red Sox in Minnesota. He's even Steven. Five wins, five losses against the Sox in his career. Shot to second base. Walker stays with it and throws him out. I think he, Walker made that play more in self-defense. 
Quick hand shown by the second baseman. Milwaukee basically known for his offense. Not so much for his defense, but he's only made four errors on the season. He makes a heck of a play here against Valentin. That ball hop just kind of explodes on him. And it's just about by him, but he's able to uh, get the out at first base. So far, Radke just wearing out the outside corner against the first two right-handed hitters that uh, he's faced so far in this game. It's a left-handed hitter here in Reggie Jefferson, who takes a called strike. 286 for Reggie, three homers, 11 runs batted in. Check our other games tonight. Texas playing the Yankees in New York. Bob Rogers will be tracking a number of those ball games for you with highlights throughout the evening. We'll have scores every 20 minutes right here on Nesson. Keeping you up to date on everything happening around the American League and the National League. Swing and a miss by Jefferson. One ball, two strikes. Well, two guys very happy to be back uh, in the American League style of baseball with the DAs. Jefferson, who uh, continually got pinch hit for in that uh, on that road trip. And, of course, Mike Stanley also in the lineup tonight. Yeah, Reggie came to the plate. Didn't even have to look back and see if somebody was going to pinch hit for him. He was announced twice, but never did get to the plate. Drives this one down the right field line. Took a shot at the foul pole, but it's foul. Still one and two. Now, certainly if a guy like Reggie could get hot, that would immediately uh, help the Red Sox offense. Didn't miss the pole by very much. A little bit short and just a little bit to the right of the foul pole. He was once in Montreal and once in New York. The Jefferson was announced in the ball game as a pinch hitter. The opposition changed, brought in a left-hander, and then Reggie was pinch hit for without ever going to the plate. Batting here against Brad Radke with the bases empty and two outs in the bottom half of the first inning. Radke missing upstairs. Two balls, two strikes. Foul fly. That'll be safely back in the seats. Brad Radke out of Jesuit High School in uh, Tampa, Florida. Here's the 2-2 now to Reggie Jefferson called strike three as he nails the outside corner. And the Red Sox go in order, 1-2-3 in the home half the first. We've played one here at Fenway tonight. The Twins lead the Sox 1-0. Here's Corey Koski for Minnesota leading off against Jin Ho Cho in the Minnesota half of the second. Koski has been on fire as he takes a called strike. Foul fly off the bat of Koski quickly down nothing in two. Seven game hitting streak for Koski and in his last nine games he's hit 533. 16 hits and 30 trips. Push that, push that average up to 343 for the year. Five homers, 23 runs batted in. Joe missing inside, one ball, two strikes. Not enough at bats for Koski to qualify for the top 10 in the American League. He's a Canadian out of Enola, Manitoba, and now lives in White Rock, British Columbia. Went to college in the United States, Des Moines Area Community College down in Boone, Iowa, but he was a uh, junior hockey player in Canada. As he fouls it over towards and into the Red Sox dugout, still a ball and two strikes.
Min Ho Cho, who was 0-3 with the Red Sox last year. Another year is seasoning under his belt. Has pitched very well this year with the Pawtucket Red Sox. As Koski fouls back another one, still the ball and two strikes. He actually got thrown out of a game down there at Pawtucket. They had some kind of brawl with Durham, I believe, a bit earlier in the season. And somewhere around the fourth inning, I think, uh, Cho got the heave-ho. Yeah, right after the bench-clearing brawl, the previous half inning, Cho came out and hit the batter. To get the next inning started, and Cho was gone and served a suspension, missed a start. Oski grounds this one foul down the right field line. Quinn scored in the first inning, a leadoff double by Jacques Jones, a two out double by Marty Cordova to get him home. One nothing Minnesota here in the top of the second. Oski fouls off another one. Oski putting on a long at bat here against Jin Ho Cho. Swing and miss. Cho got him. Cho got him on the breaking ball. And Koski swings and misses for strike three. Well, much better curveball there for Cho. Down in the strike zone and actually out of the strike zone. In the first right, inning, he left a couple of breaking balls up high. And the oh, Twins jumped all over it. This time, it's down and he picks up the strikeout. Long at bat, but uh, Jin Ho Cho wins the battle. Strikes out Koski. One out here in the top of the second inning. Here's Chad Allen, the Minnesota left fielder. First pitch strike. Allen at 276, five homers and 19 runs batted in. After the Red Sox sent Cho back to the minor leagues, they sent him to double A last season, and he pitched very well after being sent down by the big league team. He continued that success. Uh, in the early part of this season at Pawtucket. And a 7-1 mark with a 3.41 ERA. Started 11 games with the Paw Sox. He had been scheduled to start June 12th against Richmond, but with his call-up imminent, uh, was held back, and the Red Sox using him here. A couple of days later against the Minnesota Twins. Pitch is rocked by Allen towards the wall in left field and rocked out of Fenway. One of the few hitters that Cho has fallen behind. Uh, fell behind Allen 3 1 and served up the home run ball. And the Twins now have a 2 0 lead. Chad Allen picks up his sixth home run of the season. We mentioned that the uh, Minnesota Twins last in the league in home Nine. runs. This will be their 43rd of the season. Fastball, it looked like, uh, in a third of the plate, falling behind in the count, and Chad Allen makes it hurt. Now the Twins have a 2-0 lead. Home run number six for Chad Allen, Javier Valentin. Barry Steinbach on the disabled list. Steinbach has had a tough year physically. Just got back from uh, going on the disabled list and was injured in the collision at the plate and had to go back on the DL. Yeah, bad shoulder. They say he's uh, scheduled to come off the DL, I believe, sometime Wednesday, but he's not ready yet. So maybe a bit longer for Steinbach. Both Steinbach and Matt Lawton on the disabled list. Joe falls behind again. Here's a 2-0 pitch in there for a strike. Two strikes. Joe is 23. He'll be 24 August the 16th. It's the sign from Baratek. It misses high and away, and that'll run full now on Valentin. Three balls, two strikes.
ground ball first base way Stanley makes a nice pickup wins the race to the bag two gone here in the Minnesota second. Slide of that time, the hard ground ball by Valentin, but Stanley makes a nice play. Sometime the first baseman will get the signs from the second baseman. They'll let him know if a breaking ball is coming, and you can get a step to your left or lean that way. And it would be Jeff Fry who would uh, alert Stanley on what the pitch is going to be fastball, curveball, something off speed. And then a lot of times that first baseman can cheat. Number nine hitter for Minnesota center fielder Tory Hunter. To 28 for Hunter, three homers, 17 RBIs. Hunter had a grand slam against Tim Wakefield in the first meeting of the year between the Red Sox and the Twins. Grand slam gave Minnesota a 6 2 decision over the Sox. Rounds this one to third base. John Valentin to Mike Stanley in time to get Torrey Hunter. Twins get one on the home run by Chad Allen. They've got a 2 0 lead now after one and a half here at Fenway. Red Sox Classics on Nesson. We pick up action later in the game. Here's Ron Coomer leading off for Minnesota. Corey Koski, Chad Allen to follow for the Twins. They're in the visiting Grays here tonight at Fenway. Pass ball from Joe, swung on and missed by Coomer. Off to a decent start, but has slumped the last 17 or so games. Knocking that 326 average down now to 289. In the air to right field, Darren Lewis over to make the catch one out. Lewis almost uh, lost that in the light tower above third base. See that happen uh, once in a while on line drives to left field and right Number field. Then you get up too high. Sometimes you just stay right in that light tower. You see him battling it right there, but uh, finally he's able to pick up the baseball and make the catch. A little unsure as he head over, but arrives to put it away. One out. Corey Koski, the Minnesota third baseman, had a long at bat against Jin Ho Cho leading off the second inning. Fouled off pitch after pitch. Cho finally got him on a breaking ball. Down around his ankles. Oski here breaks the bat. Goes after the first pitch. Rolls it to Fry. Fry to Stanley. Two outs. So two gone here in the Minnesota fourth. Here comes Chad Allen who had a home run. His sixth of the season back in the second inning. Allen leaves the yard. Up and over the green monster into the screen. Home run for Chad Allen. Gave the Twins a 2-0 lead. It's still 2-0 as Allen bats two innings later. Where the base is empty and two outs in the fourth. And he's hit better at the Metrodome by about 50-some points than he has on the road. Good pitch by Cho, breaking ball, knee high on the outside corner. Twins got one in the first, a leadoff double by Jones, a two-out double by Cordova to get the run home. We saw Allen's home run in the second. It's a two-nothing Minnesota lead here in the fourth. For some reason the Red Sox have problems with the Twins. They've lost two or three games this year. Minnesota won the season series a year ago, six wins to five. One ball, two strikes. Kim Ho Cho hoping to have the same success that Juan Pena and Brian Rose enjoyed after their call ups from Pawtucket. Of course, from Korea. Roared through the Red Sox farm system last year. Five games at Sarasota, a couple at Trenton, up with the big club on July 4th, and then uh, after a couple of starts, finished the year back in double A with Trenton. Here he strikes out Allen, and one, two, three, go the Twins in the fourth inning. We played three and a half here at Fenway tonight, still a two nothing Minnesota lead.
Hitters three, four, and five. Jefferson, Garcia, Parra, and O'Leary. Beach ball loose out in right field. Momentary delay here at Fenway. Red Ratke has not had a lot of success at Fenway Park in his brief major league career. This is outside to Jefferson. One ball, no strikes. Redke one and three so far at Fenway Park with a 7.81 ERA coming into tonight as Jefferson skies this one. Shallow right field. Darren Lewis has to come in in a hurry. That's not Lewis. That's uh, Jefferson flying to right. That's Jones of the Twins. I got to flip the scorecard. But Jones comes in, makes the catch, and Jefferson retired in a fly ball to right. Got a late break out there, too, and it looked like for a second that ball might drop in. A very late break by uh, Jock Jones, but the ball was hit so high by Reggie that he's able to, uh, with his speed, come in and make the catch. Is it high enough where Lewis could have come out of the Red Sox dugout and made the catch? That's Jock Jones. I don't know why Darren was wearing a gray uniform. Had to flick that scorecard between innings. Got it right now. You got a flip, Bob? Got a flip. Here's Nomar Garcia Parra. Rips it down the third baseline. Foul. Nomar has one of the two Red Sox hits tonight. A leadoff single back in the second. Seven hits in his career against Radke, including a home run. Sox trying to put something together offensively. One ball and one strike. Garcia Parra fouls it back, and that one will leave Fenway. One ball, one strike. Things on Garcia Parra. Two balls, two strikes. Newsman at short, drops to his knees and loses the baseball, and Garcia Parra will reach with one out here in the fourth inning. Newsman slipped as he was trying to surround that ball to uh, make the catch on it. Breaking ball to Garcia Parra down and away. A short ground ball, a shortstop, but as uh, Guzman was trying to surround that ball to get to it right, right there, he'll just lose his balance and slip and then can't make the play. Jazz Scoggin scores that a base hit. Guzman losing his footing and having a difficult time with it. It's an infield single for Garcia Parra, who's now two for two. you can do when your feet slide out from under you. Garcia Parra takes off, pitches down low. Here's the throw down, and Garcia Parra is gunned out. A strong throw by Valentin behind the plate, and Guzman was waiting for Garcia Parra as he arrived at the second base bag. Now, Valentin has thrown out about 40% of the runners that have tried to steal against him so far this season. Good quick release, strong throwing arm, and right on the money. All Guzman's got to do is catch the ball and uh, slap the tag on Nomar. Red Sox trying to do anything to create some offense. Getting Omar going on the first pitch, but uh, excellent throw by Javier Valentin. Meanwhile, a line drive off the bat of O'Leary finds the leather of Corey Koski's glove to end the inning. No runs, one hit, nobody left. Four complete here at Fenway. Radke and the Twins still lead the Red Sox 2-0. Red Sox Classics on Nesson. We pick up action later in the game. Mike Stanley leading off here against Brad Radke, who takes a called strike. Now Radke continues to paint that outside corner tonight against Red Sox hitters. Stanley 
trying to snap out of an 0 for 22 skid is Red Key. Missing inside, one ball, one strike. Five wins, five losses, and a pretty nice 3.53 ERA for Red Key this year. Stanley grounds it foul, one ball, two strikes. Tonight it's Stanley at first, Reggie Jefferson DHing, and Brian Daubach sitting this one out so far against Brad Radke. Plate, two balls, two strikes. Radke broke in with the Minnesota Twins of a 1995 season. Won a job out of spring training that year. Won 11 games each of his first two years before blossoming into a 20 game winner in 1997. Stanley down swinging, and that's a half a dozen strikeouts for Radke tonight. Well, we always say, Jerry, you never know what you're going to see when you go to a ballpark. You never would have thought that the uh, Baltimore would beat Atlanta 22 to 1. Baltimore Johnson now has moved up. Uh, they are not in last place any longer. There's a base hit by Damon Buford. Through the right side of the infield. He has his first hit, hit number four for the Red Sox tonight. Well, he struck out on a curveball last time. Ratke starts him with the curveball, and this time uh, Buford slaps it to the opposite field for the base hit. Almost like he was sitting on the breaking ball that time. Did a nice job keeping the hands back. And picks up the fourth hit of the night for the Red Sox. And Baltimore now 25 and 36, 10 and a half back of New York in fourth place in the American League East. Tampa Bay has slid into that uh, number five spot. Red Sox still occupying the number two slot, a game and a half behind the Yankees starting play tonight. Yankees home tonight against the Texas Rangers. Veritek fouls it back. Veritek tonight flied out to Chad Allen in left field. He's 0 for 1. Buford held by Coomer at first. He's there with one out here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Docs have been blanked so far by Brad Radke. Veritek has to jump out of the way of that one. One ball, one strike. Typical Radke tonight. He has six strikeouts, has not walked a batter. He's walked more than two batters in the game just once this year. That was uh, May 11th against Tampa Bay. Walked more than two batters and just five starts all the last year. Meritek stings this one. Line drive, base hit, center field. Buford will check in at second base, and the Red Sox have their first multi hit inning. Back to back singles by Buford and Meritek, and perhaps something going for the Sox here in the fifth. Looked like a changeup that stayed upstairs by Ratke and Veritek with the hard line drive to center field. Crowd trying to get things going here. They want to get some back to back hits. Something to cheer about. Aaron Lewis. RBI situation here. Trying to pick up his first RBI since May the 28th against Cleveland. Two aboard with one out. Lewis in the air to right field. Jones is over to make the catch. Buford tags at second. He will advance one base to third. So first and third for the Sox with two outs now after Lewis flies out to Jock Jones and right. Jones was playing fairly shallow out there in right field. Had to go back about five to ten steps to make that catch. That allowed uh, Buford to tag up and move up a base. Second base, Jeff. Strong 
scouting for Radke as he works here to Jeff Fry on Kelly over in the Minnesota dugout. He gave the signs of the catch of Valentin that if case there's a possible steal where they want to throw the baseball and then Valentin relaying those to uh, relaying those signs of the third baseman Corey Koski. Buford's at third, Baratex at first. There are two outs here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Jeff Fry, who so far is one for two on the night at the plate. Last ball from Radke in for a first pitch strike. Fry went down swinging in the first inning, had a opposite field single to right, his last at bat in the third. The chess game going on with Fry, first two times up, everything away. Fry got a base hit last time up, that time first pitch inside. Back inside again. This one misses. Evens the count of the ball and a strike. He runs five hits for the Twins. No runs, five hits for the Sox. Pounded foul by Fry. And Radke ahead in the count now. A ball and two strikes. Wendell Kim in the third base coaching box for the Red Sox. And then Buford gets his lead off third base. had been inside in this at bat when he got the two strikes back to the outside corner and Fry will just slap it right down that first baseline. First baseman Kuma holding on the runner. He pops off the bag. There's no way he can get back to make the play. Interesting matchup that time. Uh, Radke tried to stay inside then when he wanted to put him away back outside but that time Fry was ready for it. Picks up the big two out base hit. Red Sox break through. It's two to one. Still runners at first and third with two outs and John Valentin trying to stretch a seven game hitting streak at the plate. Hot shot right back to Radke. Radke took that one full force throws out Valentin but that one hurt Radke who was really limping on the mound. What a shot Radke took as he heads down the runway I'm sure to get some ice. Looked like the knee bob somewhere around that knee area where the line drive got him from Valentin. Trainer Dick Martin attending to him. Mike Lincoln, who was uh, bumped out of the starting rotation with a rain out yesterday, is throwing in the bullpen for the Twins. Don Walker leads off for Minnesota here in the sixth. It'll be Walker followed by Marty Cordova and then Ron Coomer. There's Lincoln. Lincoln was scheduled to start yesterday against the Milwaukee Brewers, but that game was rained out and a Skipped over Lincoln in the starting rotation. Gave the start to Radke. Speared here by Garcia Parra. The line drive by Walker. Nice play by Nomar. Nomar into the dive to take the base hit away from Walker. Yeah, really not even time here for a step in a dive. Just about uh, all time for is the dive. As Nomar will take the base hit away. I'll tell you what, there's been a few hitters in this game that have had some hits taken away. Twice Valentin has hit the ball hard. Right there, Todd Walker with the hard line drive, but uh, Nomar makes the play. One out on the sixth. Here's Marty Cordova. Well, two pitches have resulted in two outs for Jin Ho Cho. Got Walker and now gets Cordova. I think you'll see uh, Ron Coomer take a little time here in the on deck circle before getting up to the plate. Whether it's going to be Radke, uh, which I kind of doubt, or Mike Lincoln, who is down there loosening up. 
Well, I mean, what a three pitch inning so far for uh, Jin Ho Cho. Wynn's got a uh, run in the first off Jin Ho Cho. One more in the second on the home run by Allen. He has blanked him since. This is empty two outs here in the sixth. Here's Ron Coomer. Coomer takes one up high. One ball, no strikes. Coomer tonight has rounded to Garcia Parr and lined out to Lewis in right field. Foul fly safely back in the seats here at Fenway. One ball and one strike. Kelly has been the manager of the Twins since 1986. Boomer with a base hit to center field. For the most part, Bob, excuse me, since the first couple of innings, uh, Cho's done a pretty good job of keeping those Number breaking 47. pitches down. Uh, that one stayed upstairs, and uh, Ron Coomer with the base set up the middle. There's third baseman Corey Koski, 0 for 2 tonight, came into uh, Fenway very hot. And Ho Cho, 85 pitches, 58 of them strikes. Beach ball loose in center field, that's the reason for the delay. And called by Richie Garcia behind the plate. Eric Lowe begins to warm in the bullpen for the Red Sox. Lowe in the Sox pen, Lincoln in the Twins pen. Minnesota leads the ball game 2-1 here, top of the sixth inning. Boomer aboard in first base with two outs and Corey Koski at the plate here against Jin Ho Cho. Takes one down and away. One ball, no strikes. Jankowski played junior A hockey at the University of Manitoba and also went to Des Moines uh, Junior College in Boone, Iowa. Made his major league debut for the Twins last September. At the bulk of the year at Salt Lake City where he hit 301. Still Kerrigan now coming out of the Red Sox dugout. Jin Ho Jo got the first two hitters this inning, then gave up the base hit to Coomer, and now is falling behind Koski 2-0. Oh. Jin Ho Cho has been able to uh, learn and understand some English in the last couple of years and certainly enough to uh, understand what the pitching coach is talking about. Yeah, multinational game now baseball. As Koski pops it up. Meritek, the catcher, called off by Valentin coming in from third base to make the catch for the final out of the inning. No runs, one hit, and one left. We play five and a half here at Fenway. Sox trail Minnesota two to one. There again is the shot that knocked uh, Radke out of the ball game. Right off the bat of John Valentin at the end of the fifth inning, and Radke going down to get some ice. Head down is Dick Martin, the Minnesota trainer. Down the passageway they go. That's all for Radke. So the Red Sox get Radke out of the ball game after five. They get into the Minnesota bullpen. This is Mike Lincoln, one of the Minnesota starting pitchers, and Lincoln on here to pitch in relief. Twelfth appearance overall, uh, two and eight on the season. Only 16 strikeouts in 54 and two thirds. He is fresh out of Double A baseball. 
Last year, uh, pitch for New Britain had a 15 and 7 record. Uh, this is last outing and a win against the Reds on June the 7th. Only three years of professional baseball. Two years at Fort Myers, one at New Britain, and last year he was uh, ranked as the best breaking ball in Double A baseball, along with control. Red Sox faced him, didn't they, earlier in the season uh, in that series at Minnesota, I believe. Either that or they saw a lot of them in spring training. We have seen Lincoln before. This is his 12th appearance of the year, second time he's worked out of the bullpen. Ricky Jefferson leads off here. He did make a start in that series uh, at the Metrodome earlier. Now he was the losing pitcher when the Sox salvaged the final game of the series 9 to 4. He was beaten by Pat Rapp. Lincoln went four innings, gave up uh, four runs, six hits. Lincoln on a relief of Brad Radke. Reggie Jefferson swings and misses. Well, I'm sure the Red Sox are happy to have Radke out of the ball game, but we certainly hope nothing is uh, seriously wrong with him. Terrific pitcher, and hopefully everything will be all right. He won't miss a start. Benji has been called out on strikes and flied to right. Radke went five, gave up one run, six hits, struck out six, did not walk a batter. Two two to Jefferson breaking ball down and in going all the way back to the screen so it's a full count. Jefferson on the 3-2 pitch of so the Red Sox have their leadoff man aboard. And Nomar Garcia Parra coming to the plate. Single to left and had an infield single when Guzman slipped it short. So, Nomar, as you saw, is two for two tonight. Has two of Boston's six hits. That's by Lincoln, gets the outside corner for a strike. One and one. Mike Lincoln, a native of California, went to the University of Tennessee. by the Twins in 96. Strike two. Tomaselli almost caught it there. That's right over by the Red Sox dugout. But uh, we get the safety glasses on the whole bit down there. <laughs> when, did he, when did he add the uh, glasses? Is this something new? It's tough to get old, isn't it, Bob? Got a big lens there, too. I mean, it's not small print. Breaking ball, lifted in the air to left field. Charging in is Chad Allen. Allen makes the catch. He struggled a bit, but made the catch for the first out of the inning. We called Bob when we were in Minnesota earlier in the season, and there was this, one of these uh, Sunday night late sports shows that had both uh, Chad Allen and Mike Lincoln on, and how excited they were to be in the big leagues. Neither one of them, I think, expected to be Number on the major league roster this season, and uh, it was really refreshing Troy, to watch that interview. They were having the time of their life, enjoying every moment of it. Being a little better in the big leagues than it was last year at New Britain. Boy, O'Leary here batting for the Red Sox. And O'Leary skies this one to center field. Corey Hunter goes back. Hunter goes all the way back to the warning track to make the catch. And Jefferson scoots all the way back to first base. 
Just thinking, though, what an interesting way to break into baseball. I mean, you could you probably relate as a player. I mean, coming up with 13 different rookies on your club, usually you don't have. Usually you're the only one, or there might be maybe one other, but certainly not 13 rookies on one team. Well, the good news is you get to the big leagues probably earlier than you expected to get there on a team that's going to go with so many young players. The bad news, you're probably not going to win all that much for a while. But the key is getting to the big leagues and uh, hopefully uh, get developed from that point on. But uh, well, a number of these players probably up maybe two or three years before uh, they would be in other organizations. Family grounds a foul down the third baseline. And there's such difficult, different circumstances, too. Stanley has been up twice tonight, has struck out twice. Mike battling, uh, trying to battle his way through an 0 for 23 slump. Strike. Breaking ball, grounded to third. Corey Koski makes the play. Retires Stanley at first base, and that retires the side. Sox get the leadoff walk to Jefferson, but he fails to advance. We played uh, six innings tonight here at Fenway Park, and the Twins lead the Red Sox 2-1. Here under the lights at Fenway, ball game advancing now to the late innings. We go to the top of the seven, still 2-1 in favor of the Minnesota Twins. Jin Ho Cho pitched very well for the Red Sox tonight. Leaves behind in the ball game 2-1, but he pitched a strong six innings. And Derek Lowe is first up out of the bullpen. 32nd appearance for Lowe. That puts him uh, tied for third in the league in appearances. There you see the rest of the numbers for Derek. The last time he was in a game was against the Mets on the 12th. Pitch an inning in that ball game, a walk and a strikeout. That was that Saturday Fox game. Quick look at Jin Ho Cho's numbers. Six innings, two runs, six hits, struck out three, did not walk a batter. Nice. Chad Allen leads off for the Twins here against Derek Lowe. First pitch strike. Bottom third of the order for Minnesota, Chad Allen. Javier Valentin, Torrey Hunter. Chad Allen out of Texas A&M. Son of former NFL defensive back Jack Allen. Native of Dallas, Texas, still makes his home down that area. Fourth round draft choice in June 1996. Three balls, one strike. for ball four so Chad Allen trots down to first Javier Valentin for Minnesota batting with Chad Allen at first base and nobody out to center field. Damon Buford over to make the catch for the first out here of the inning. Chad Allen back to first base. And Chad Allen was getting back to tag up. Uh, so obviously one of those outfielders probably Darren Lewis uh, letting Buford know that and he quickly got the ball back in. And Chad Allen still all smiles in the big leagues. Number 48 the center fielder Tory Hunter. Hunter.
Seven steals for Allen on the season. He's been caught twice. on Hunter and ideas of dropping down the bunt Hunter began last year at New Britain went to Salt Lake City got some big league time with the twins at the end of last year but he is still classified a rookie looking down to third base coach Ron Garden hire to figure out what Tom Kelly wants to do in this situation that Allen at first base with one out Two runs, six hits, no errors for the Twins. One run, six hits, and one error for the Red Sox. That one goes backwards. Have you got a cleat caught or exactly what? It was the dirt's fault. You can see he's smoothing out the dirt. <laughs> Looks like he just lost his balance as he went back on that uh, first base bag. He takes off. Hunter chops it to third base. Valentin has just the one play. So Hunter retired. Allen advances down to second. You kind of write that down as a hit and run play put on an 0-1 count. You don't normally see that. Number but uh, Tom Kelly confident that Derek right Lowe is going to throw a strike in that situation. Gets the runner moving. The contact by Torrey Hunter and gets a man in the scoring position. See if the dirt is any better there at second base. <laughs> Smoothing it out just to make sure. Rock Jones. Had a double back in the first inning. Scored the first Minnesota run. Since then has bounced back to the pitcher. Yun Ho Cho at the time. And then flat out to O'Leary in left field. Three swinging here. Down a strike. And two. Wins with one in the first, one in the second. The Red Sox got one in the fifth inning. RBI single by Jeff Fry. Two strike pitch over the first base bag. Whistled down into the right field corner. Here's Jones hitting it pretty well out to left field. Back goes O'Leary, has to play it high off the wall. Chad Allen comes in to score. Jones goes into second with his second double of the ball game. And the Twins get the run back, and they now have a 3-1 lead. Well, once again, Jock Jones using the opposite field here at Fenway and showing that he has enough power to get the ball up on the wall. That's where that uh, hit and run play becomes important. They get the man in scoring position. If he's still at first base, he's not going to be able to score on this. But by advancing the second base with the two outs, he can score on the ball off the wall. Throw is high by O'Leary, but uh, Jones was going to beat that anyway at second base. Backed up by Stanley. And the Minnesota lead is now 3-1. Christian Guzman swings and misses. For three with a strikeout tonight for Guzman. Remember talking about Guzman's numbers in spring training last year in New Britain. He walked 21 times and he struck out 111. Here at the big league level so far, he's walked five times this year and has struck out 30. He's 0 for 3 tonight. Two strikes. Jones, the runner at second with two outs. His double got Chad Allen home. Swing and a miss. Down on strikes goes Guzman, and that'll retire the side. But the Twins get a run. On a hit, they strand Jones at second. Seventh inning stretch here at Fenway. Sox trail Minnesota 3-1. to one. Bottom half of the seventh inning, Mike Lincoln 
Trying to protect the 3-1 lead. Bottom third of the order coming up for the Sox here in the seventh. Damon Buford, Jason Veritek, and Darren Lewis. Brad Radke starting tonight for Minnesota, leaving after being hit. By the ball off the bat of Valentin at the end of the fifth inning. What did you say? It was a knee, you thought? It looked like the knee. I don't know. It may have been a little bit lower than that, but nice to see that he was able to at least walk off the field. Replaced by Mike Lincoln last inning. Lincoln now working his second inning of relief as Damon Buford takes a called strike, two and one. Brad Key and Lincoln tonight for the Twins. Lincoln last inning walked the leadoff man Reggie Jefferson then got Garcia Parra O'Leary and Stanley. He has fallen behind Buford three and one as we open the seventh. And he's walked the leadoff man for the second straight inning. Conventional baseball wisdom says you don't get away with that often. And Buford who has speed is at first base. Sox down by a pair. Jason Veritek at the plate. Twins getting some stirring now out in the bullpen. Bob Wells begins to loosen for Minnesota. Meanwhile, Mike Lincoln here battling Jason Veritek. Veritek rocks this one to center field, hit well. Hunter is way back, looking up, off the wall. Rounding third, heading in is Buford. Veritek has a long, long double. Just missed, heading it into the bleachers. High off the wall. Buford, who walked to open the inning, scores. It's 3-2. to two. Well, this couldn't have missed being a home run by any more than, what, five feet? Right off the top of that center field wall for Veritek. Ball hit a long way. A good read by Buford. He knew it was either going to be a home run or off the wall. He never hesitated as he rounded the bases, and he'll score easily on the double. That ball was hit just a little bit higher. The wind would have helped push that ball into center field bleaches. Double number 12 on the season for Veritek as Buford scores the second run for the Red Sox. So it's back to a one-run game. Still nobody out for the Red Sox here in the seventh inning. Aaron Lewis takes one down low. One ball, no strikes. Lewis called out on strikes in the third. Lied to right field in the fifth. Both of those previous at bats coming against the starter Radke. That one is up high, two and zero. Oh. Veritek now has 24 RBIs this year, and 15 of them have come from the seventh inning on. Tom Kelly making his way out to the mound. Bob Wells, as we showed you just a little bit earlier, has been loosening up for about the last uh, five minutes or so, and it looks like he's going to make the call. Todd Walker there at second base with Jason Veritek, who hit it high off the center field wall, just missed hitting it into the bleachers, which would have tied the ball game. Well, Veritek is at second, still nobody out. Two balls, no strikes. On the hitter, Darren Lewis. Pops it up. Valentin. Got out the glove to make the catch. It's never seen routine for the catcher. Tough play behind the play. Valentin back to make it, though. Well, the ball's always going to come back toward the infield, and plus you add in the uh, factor of the breeze blowing back toward the uh, home plate also. It's going to be a much more difficult play for Valentin. 
is with it. They record the first out of the inning. And the report on Radke is a bruised left knee. And Radke left the game after five bruised left knee. Top of the order for the Red Sox. Here's the second baseman, Jeff Fry. He's had a nice night offensively. A couple of hits and three trips, including an RBI. Pitch in for a called strike. This lead were to hold for the Twins. They no longer have Rick Aguilera to close out. It's Mike Trombley who is now the Minnesota closer. And that's who Tom Kelly is trying to get to. It's been Radke, Lincoln, and now Bob Wells so far tonight. Travis Miller, a left-hander, working right now in the Minnesota bullpen. One strike is the count on Fry. Struck out in the first inning, single to right in the third, and again in the fifth. Now trying to get Jason Baratek home from second base with what would be the tying run as they trail 3-2 here in the bottom of the seventh. Base hit left field. Veritek held at third by Wendell Kim is hustling it back in. It's Chad Allen. And the Red Sox have runners at first and third with one out. Fry has a three hit night. Now we talked about a comfort level for Fry. He'd been at shortstop at third base. Now he's back home at second tonight and responding offensively. Three ba base hits in the ball game. Ball hit too hard and a good charge put on by Allen to even try to score Veritek. As Veritek had to hold up for a split second to make sure that ball got through on the right side. And Veritek at third. Fry over at first. Valentin at the plate. John is 0 for 3 tonight. Trying to get Jason Veritek home from third with a game tying run. Makes the called strike. He's 0 for 3, but he's hit the ball hard a couple of times, uh, robbed of hits. The one, obviously, back to uh, Radke that put him out of the ball game. And earlier in the game, a ground ball to second base, actually more of a line drive. And Walker made a nice play on. Missing some time on the road trip. Throwing strain. Swings and misses and is down now in the count. One and two. Don having to come out of one of the ball games up in Montreal. Jeff Fry had to fill in for a couple of days. John returning to the lineup over the weekend in New York against the Mets. Fry at first base. There's Veritek over at third. Pulled foul. Still a ball and two strikes. I feel really shading Valent in the opposite field now that he has two strikes on him. Uh, Torrey Hunter in center field, also uh, Doc Jones in right. It shifted more in that direction once Valentin got to two strikes. Two and two. Bob Wells is the third pitcher to work for the Minnesota Twins tonight. Here's the two two now to Valentin. It's pop foul back behind the plate. Valentin is coming back right at the edge of the stands, but that's about five rows back in. Still two balls, two strikes.
Jeff Fry held by Ron Coomer at first. Jason Baratek over at third base. Two balls, two strikes on the hitter, John Valentin. 2 2 from Wells. Check swing. Fouled away by Valentin. Valentin at the plate. Reggie Jefferson on deck. Fox trying to regain some of the magic here at home after a tough road trip. Two pitch from Wells. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Big strikeout for Wells and the Twins as that keeps Veritek at third base with now two outs. That's going to leave it up to Reggie Jefferson. And we'll have to see if uh, Tom Kelly comes out to go to the bullpen and bring in a left-hander, which might bring another move from Jimmy Williams to send up Jose Offerman. Travis Miller, the lefty, was warming in the bullpen for Minnesota. The Twins manager is making his way out. Ball has gone out for the left-hander, so he'll come on to pitch to either Jefferson or probably the pinch hitter Offerman. Sox have got runners at first and third. Now two outs, Travis Miller and Jose Offerman. Our matchup. Offerman was one for four with an RBI yesterday and the loss to the Mets. Pretty good success against Miller, even though it's only seven at bats, five hits, including a home run. So, not a bad matchup for the Red Sox. One ball, no strikes. Raining in New York. Second base, Walker to Guzman in time for the force out on Fry, and that will end the threat. Well, the Red Sox do get one run. They fall one short. They trail 3-2 as we go to the eighth. Now the Red Sox down by a run, 3-2 as we go to the eighth inning. Derek Lowe continues on the mound for the Sox. So, Sox got one run in the inning. Could have had another. Veritek's ball had been just a few feet higher. Just missed the home run with that long double. 3-2 Twins. Todd Walker here leading off against Derek Lowe. Ground ball right side. Jeff Fry makes the play. The flip to Stanley in time to get Walker. One pitch, one out. Well, the Red Sox still had a great chance to add more runs in that inning and a couple of big outs. Strike out to Valentin and then the uh, round out by Offerman. Run still hard to come by for Jimmy Williams troops. One out here, top of the eighth for Minnesota. Marty Cordova, the Twins DH. Cordova had a double off the wall back in the first inning, which got Jock Jones home with the game's first run. Round it out to third in the third inning. And the shortstop in the sixth. Well, Cordova one for three tonight. This is the second inning on the mound for Derek Lowe in relief of the starter Jin Ho Cho. Foul fly down the right field line. One ball, two strikes. was the American League's Rookie of the Year back in 95. He had an even better year, his sophomore year, in 96, and then uh, was bothered by some injuries and uh, has struggled really since. Stand by Lowe, who missed inside. Three balls, two strikes. Rodolfo's had some heel problems. He's had some, I believe, back problems. Was on the DL with a neck strain. Nubs this one foul down the third baseline. Still three balls, two strikes. Two 
Twins have actually played their best baseball against the American League East. Eight and six against the East. And below 500 against uh, both the Central and the West. Way below 500 against those two divisions. Cordova with a one-out walk. That's the second free pass issued by Derek Lowe. Lowe walked Allen last inning, and Allen scored in the double by Jones. Number eight, the first baseman, Ron Coomer. Jason Veritek going out for a word with Lowe. Coomer, the batter here for Minnesota. We get some stirring now out in the Red Sox bullpen. Get some action in the Sox bullpen. Twins have one on one out here in the eighth inning. John Wasden taking the jacket off. Low, meanwhile, battles Ron Coomber, who's one for three tonight. Hops up the breaking ball, foul territory. Mike Stanley, with plenty of room, is there to make the catch for the second out of the inning. Lowe got to Walker with Number one pitch on a ground ball to second base. Cordova, he walked on a 3-2 count, and then uh, Coomer follows him, goes after the first pitch, and fouls out. Wins third baseman Corey Koski, who's over three tonight. Swing and a miss by Koski, late on the swing on the low fastball. Koski has struck out, grounded to second, and popped to third. Breaking ball this time from Lowe, and he's quickly ahead, nothing in two. Some attention to Cordova over at first base, held there by Stanley. Ground ball foul over to the Boston dugout. Still two strikes on Corey Koski. Men's got one in the first, one in the second. On the second inning scoring on Allen's home run. Sox got one in the fifth inning on the single by Fry. Twins got a run in the seventh. And the double by Jones. Sox got uh, one in the bottom half of the seventh inning on the double by Jason Veritek. A 3 2 Minnesota lead here in the top of the eighth inning. Two strikes. Oh, missed inside with a fastball. Yeah, not by very much. A uh, number of pitches away. Tried to straight him up inside with the fastball. Didn't get the call from Richie Garcia. Round ball back to low. Low handles over to the first baseman Stanley in time to get Koski, and that will retire the side. No runs, no hits, no errors, one left. We played seven and a half here at Fenway. Sox are down by a run. Any hocking in the ball game? We'll take over at second base from Todd Walker and Joe Mays is the new Minnesota pitcher. One time member of the Seattle organization involved in a trade a couple of years ago that sent Roberto Kelly at the Seattle. Omar Garcia Parra leads off for the Sox. Troy O'Leary, Mike Stanley follow. Omar has a couple of hits in three trips, both singles. Valentin had a nice play from behind the plate. Got out quickly to throw out Garcia Parra. One out here in the eighth. Yeah, it was a nice play. It looked like it might have been an easier play for the pitcher, Joe Mays, to make. But uh, Valentin will call him off. A quick spin around to first base and threw a strike. 
to Ron Coomer to get uh, Garcia Parra. A lot of times you see a catcher try that play and then just completely slip on that grass, but uh, not that time. Ellen team's had a nice game behind the plate. They get a dangerous hitter there, and Garcia Parra leading off the inning. Here's Troy O'Leary, who's 0 for 3 tonight. O'Leary, who leads the Red Sox in home runs with 12 this year, has started every game with the exception of three this year out in left field. Given a night off, the last night of the Montreal series on the last road trip as Mays misses inside. Mays is the fifth pitcher to work tonight for the Twins. Radke, Lincoln, Wells, Miller, and now Mays. Skips it up to O'Leary. Two balls and a strike. Tim Wakefield, the new Red Sox closer, and John Wasden work in the bullpen. Backhanding, throwing, but they're not able to get Troy O'Leary as an infield single. Hawking did all he could do, but O'Leary beats it for a base hit. Hawking showed a pretty strong throwing arm on this play to first base. It actually made it closer than we uh, thought it was going to be. I thought this ball uh, would have no chance of being played to first, but Hawking uh, with the one hop throw, O'Leary hustling all the way, will beat it for the base hit. Nine hits for the Red Sox tonight. Out hitting the Twins nine to seven. Mike Stanley here against Joe Mays. One ball, no strikes. Stanley 0 for three tonight. His last hit, a home run off Justin Thompson. A home run would look mighty big here for the Red Sox. And Joe Mays has given up 12 of them so far this season. That's an awful lot out of the bullpen. Breaking ball on the outside corner, a ball and a strike. Towards the left field corner, but it's a foul ball. One ball, two strikes. Roy O'Leary at first base with one out, bottom half of the eighth inning. Sox down by a run. Joe Mays working out of the bullpen here for the Minnesota Twins. Delivers 1-2 to Stanley, swing and a miss, struck him out. So Mays picks up the strikeout. He gets the veteran Stanley, and that's the third time that Stanley has gone down swinging tonight. He struck out tonight on a changeup the first time, a curveball the second time, and now the fastball by Mike Stanley. Hey, the best pitch to hit in that at bat was a breaking ball he threw that was called a ball, but it was right about to let a high, and one I think Stanley probably Wait, wished he had uh, taken a hack at. For the Red Sox. Now batting for Buford, number 23. Ryan Daubach being announced into the game. He will pinch hit here for Damon Buford. Now batting for Buford. Daubach has provided some real power for the Red Sox. Valentin and Mays talking things over on the mound. Three fifteen for Daubach with seven homers and 21 runs batted in. As a pinch hitter, uh, 0 for 4 on the season. Breaking ball missed inside. 
Arbach was 0 for 4 in the ball game against the Mets. Yesterday he does have six homers though in his last 11 games. As Mays falls behind two balls no strikes. Tom Kelly next to him was Dick Such his pitching coach. Jimmy Williams in the Sox dugout. 2-0 from Mays inside ball three. Robach reaches Jason Veritek is up next for the Sox. Hubbuck may have the green light here three and oh. on the outfield grass throws out the pinch hitter Daubach and that retires the side no runs one hit one left we go to the ninth box trailed the twins three to two first pitch strike from Wazden to Chad Allen who homered in the second inning struck out in the fourth and then walked and scored a run in the seventh Little number foul down the third baseline. Two strikes on Allen. Dan Allen back in the second inning. A one-nothing ball game with one out here in the second. Against Jin Ho Cho. Takes him deep and over the left field wall. Sixth home run of the year for Chad Allen. Gave Minnesota a two-nothing lead. It's now 3-2 twins in the ninth. Jin Ho Cho for six. He gave up two runs, six hits. Derek Lowe working two innings. Gave up the run in the seventh. And now John Wasden here working in the ninth. Here's the 0-2 from John. Had a good pitch, but just missed outside, according to Rich Garcia. One and two. Fly ball, right center field. And the fielder is the quarterback, and that's Darren Lewis makes the catch for the first out. And Allen out on the fly to center, one out. Javier Valentin bats now for Javier Minnesota. Valentin. For the Red Sox in the bottom of the night, Jason Baratek. Darren Lewis and then back to the top of the order and Jeff Fry. <laughs> Valentin takes strike one. strike here on Valentin. It's Mike Trombley. He's the new closer for the Twins. Has uh, seven saves since Rick Aguilera was dealt to the Chicago Cubs. And let's see the Red Sox will in all probability be facing in the ninth inning. Back-to-back changeup from Wazden, uh, almost the same location, down and in. To Valentin, two for four tonight. He had a five-game hitting streak going till uh, these uh, last four at bats. It's a little bit like Pedro Rodriguez, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Foul back. And the bulk of the playing time for the Twins behind the plate with Steinbach on the DL. 
He has been their catcher of the future for some time. They've had Steinbach to provide the veteran leadership, and perhaps now Valentin is emerging into the role. This is Torrey Hunter quickly down two strikes to John Wozniak. to end the inning, so we go to the bottom half of the ninth inning. The Sox trail Minnesota by one. Trying to pull one out here in the bottom of the ninth. Swing and a miss. One strike on Baratek, who is two for three tonight. Aaron Lewis in the on deck circle. Jeff Fry will hit third. strike out pitch for Trombley is that split finger fastball a lot of teams in baseball interested in Trombley not so much as a closer he was an excellent setup man for Aguilera two and one the count towards the Boston dugout that runs the count full on Jason Veritek. Veritek flied to left in the third single to center in the fifth. We showed you his double high off the center field wall in the seventh inning. And Kelly has used six pitchers tonight. He has his closer Mike Trombley in the game now. Six pitchers in a 3-2 ball game. Baratek hot shot to short Guzman position perfectly and the throw over to Coomer in time to get Baratek and there's one out. Well, Baratek running that count to three and two hit the ball well but uh, right at Christian Guzman. Number 20 the center fielder Darren Lewis. One out on the Boston ninth the number nine hitter Darren Lewis who's 0 for three tonight. ball from Trombley for strike one. Lewis called out on strikes in the third. Fly to right field in the fifth. Foul to the catcher Valentin in the seventh. And breaking ball stayed up high. One ball one strike. Ball missed outside. Swing and a miss by Lewis. A high fastball, two and two. Like that swing there by Lewis designed to uh, tie the score. Fastball up around Lutta High.
Brad Radke is the leader in the clubhouse. He would stand to pick up the win. He was knocked out when uh, John Ballington lined one off his knee, and he suffered a bruised knee right at the end of the fifth inning. And he was the he would be the pitcher record on the winning side. Jin Ho Cho would be the loser for the Red Sox if the Sox could not come back and tie up this game here in the ninth inning. Radke went five. Jin Ho Cho went six. Both pitched well. Rombley went to 3-2 on Baratek. He's going 3-2 here on Darren Lewis. And Lewis skies this one to left field. Chad Allen is back. Chad Allen is looking up. It's gone! A home run for Darren Lewis. Just over the wall. And the ball game is tied 3-3. First home run for Lewis since April the 27th against the Twins in Minnesota. And he drops this one over the monster, and it's a brand new ball game. Well, I told you earlier that he had a swing and had a bat that was designed to hit a home run. He finally got it on the 3-2 count. Fastball inside part of the plate. And Lewis ties this ball game. Big home run by Darren Lewis. It's 3-3 here in the bottom of the ninth. And the top of the order up to the Sox. Still only one out. Jeff Fry takes a breaking ball for a called strike. Fry, who has three hits tonight. John Valentin's on deck. And if they can stir up something, Jose Offerman. Fastball is wide. One ball, one strike. There are certain closes under no circumstance where they come inside in a one-run ball game. They'll make the hitter try to use the big part of the ballpark. That fastball was inside in a third of the plate to Lewis, and he hit the home run. Tom Blade deals 1-1. One, one. Fastball away from Fry. Ball two. Three runs, seven hits for the Twins. Three runs, ten hits for the Sox. And Sox have tied it. Now they're trying to win it in the bottom of the ninth. Foul back by Fry. That'll even things at two and two. Three straight singles, two to right. The last one through the left side of the infield into left. And another full count. Conway has gone to a full count on all three hitters here in the ninth inning. Got Baratek and a ground to short, but then served up the home run to Lewis and has now gone 3-2 to Jeff Fry. and Jeff Fry are probably the unlikeliest duo to ever win a game with back-to-back -back home runs. They shock the Twins and perhaps even surprise themselves. When we come back, we'll hear what the two improbable sluggers had to say after their unexpected power surge. <laughs> 